Hello there, and welcome to my new guide about gene combos and gene builds in RimWorld Biotech. I'm Icon, and in this video, I'm going to showcase the best builds that I've managed to put together with the vanilla genes for all the jobs in your colonies. There are timestamps in the description box, so if you're looking for a certain topic or a build, go check them out. And if you don't find what you're looking for, just drop me a comment and I'll see what I can do. In this video, I'm going to first introduce what I deem a optimal choice of genes for a certain task. Then I'm going to talk about different drawbacks that you can mix in. And then I'm going to talk about a couple of alterations or things that I also see as quite useful. Of course, all will be explained why I picked what and why it combines well with everything. And uh, at the end of the day, you should have a nice impression how to tinker your genes ac across your campaigns, whether it be rolling out the super characters right from the get-go or tinkering genomes during your campaigns. This video su should support both ways. So, quick pointer towards the support links in the description box. There's PayPal, Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee as ways and means to support this channel and I'd be happy if you check them out. A big thanks to all the supporters of this channel, you're making a lot of things possible and I appreciate. So, with that out of the way, let's get started with the first builds that are probably the most easy ones, the combat ones, or at least the ranged combat one is easy. The melee one is a little bit more complicated. Let's start with the ranged one. So, the ranged characters don't have too many options in the genomes that are too appealing, generally. So, what I picked here was, first off, great shooting. I mean, it goes without saying, it boosts the shooting skill, and because this skill is directly linked to your accuracy, this is pretty, pretty important. It's also quite costly to pick that, but it's worth noting that without that this level of strong shooting does not apply a passion. This one applies a passion and you learn a lot faster. So it's up to you how you want to skill that or what you have available. Strong shooting is still better than no shooting, but great shooting is preferable in my humble opinion because the passion is really worth it. Cross uh, alongside with that goes the smooth tail and the elongated fingers. So extra manipulation does actually influence ranged combat because the higher your manipulation, the higher your average accuracy. So these two traits really pay off. And then we got the dark vision because you know darkness influences your accuracy negatively as well. And there you go. That's a pretty simple setup. There aren't too many other genes that are specifically meant to work well on a ranged character. A couple of ideas though that I found pretty useful. You could consider using hemogenics and go for long jump legs. This is pretty cool because this way you can bunny hop away from your attackers. Basically makes up for a sick kiting strategy but requires hemogenic application and that is quite a investment that you have to take one or you don't take it. Of course you can also pick up on top of the uh, skills you got the runner traits that would be a replacement for the long jump legs but these are also very very costly. When picking downsides for a ranged character it is quite simple. You can of course just go for negative aptitudes these are always an option or full melee or something like that might come in handy. If you are opting in for a character that's supposed to be a main ranged character, you can easily go for a combination like awful melee, weak melee damage, and you're already mitigated a lot of these things. And on top of that, you can then, well, go for... It's a little bit hard what, you, what to go for there. It really, really depends on your colony. My cell instability is pretty nasty if you don't have good doctors. If you have good doctors, the cancer rate factor doesn't really attribute much and uh, can cure that away. In doubt, if you don't know what to add in to increase uh, this number here, go for negative aptitudes. They never really hurt you too much. Everything else is really very, very situational. I would strongly... Um, recommend you not to pick up negative sleep traits because these are really really powerful against you and uh, goes without saying that disabled violence is a no-no and uh, well beyond that it's really up to you how you want to uh, balance out the last points 
So let's hop on over to the next trait uh, pool, and that's the melee, uh, the, the melee gene pool. So with the melee, as you see, we got a lot more things here going on. So I chose a couple of things that I personally think make a really, really powerful character. So first off, super fast wound healing. Melee characters get wounded more than other fighters, so this helps mitigating that issue. Super clotting, same thing. Bleeding wounds close very quickly, makes them less depending on their doctor. Psychically deaf, I put that in because I didn't because I wanted to have a metabolic uh, efficiency increaser. It's not necessarily something for melee. We can't leave that out. I just put in these as example weaknesses that are quite fitting for a fighter, but you can replace them, of course. Strong melee damage is a really, really powerful thing to pick up, and robust is the same. Robust is a damage decrease. Combine that with tough and you have a tank that's really, really hard to tackle down. Reduced pain makes your character work for longer periods of time without breaking down. Effectively, the less pain they feel, the longer it takes until they get down. Pretty powerful. Nearsighted is a very cool drawback for melee characters because nearsighted is only affecting accuracy over longer ranges. If your character is going to be a melee specialist, this won't bother him too much. Unstoppable is unbelievably powerful because this means if your character is going to eat a bullet or anything along the way, he's just going to keep moving. This makes up for insanely effective characters. So here we went for awful shooting right away and great melee right from the bat. So here I have already drafted in a couple of drawbacks just, just from the get-go because the uh, pack here was already really, really negative and I was... Uh, trying to balance that out off screen so what would be a positive uh, alteration to pick up here would be also the runner traits or picking up long jump legs here what gets you away from the enemy gets you also towards the enemy but in my personal experiences long jump legs are really well used against sieges enemies that are moving Closing in on them with a jump won't work that well, but uh, you get the idea. Beyond that, you can now flatten out the rest of the metabolic efficiency drawbacks however you see fit. A couple of things, though. I would highly recommend you not to pick up traits like staggeringly ugly. Ugly people start social fights more often. This is a uh, suite that want, doesn't want to go into social fights too often. You could also consider getting some uh, happiness genes like Sanguine or Optimist to lower the amount of mental breakdowns a tad bit. That calm is also pretty cool because this way your characters will never go into violent mental breaks. Strong melee characters make damn scary violent character um, violent outbreaks so that calm is really 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 recommendable but as you see here you're racking up a lot of deficiency so you have to work against that when it comes down to uh, evening that out i leave that up to you i already mentioned a couple of things with the ranged character for the melee character there aren't too many other things that are specifically good to pick here Bad aptitudes always work to even things out. You can also go for a dependency if you have access to a certain drug. This also makes for a nice plus bonus, but it's also quite uh, dangerous. <coughs> if you really want to go crazy, you can also go for a immunity of stuff like Gojus or um, Psykeet to make the character even more invulnerable. So. Last thing to mention there, hemogenic combos go pretty well because you can rack up a lot of uh, metabolic efficiency things there as well. So, next topic on my list, I wanted to go for the craftspeople. So, let's load a craftsperson. This build is applicable to arts, crafting, and generally everything that doesn't really get covered in the other classes here. So for a crafter, I picked up the elongated fingers and the smooth tail again, because you know, manipulation bonuses are what you want to take. Great crafting goes without saying. Dark vision, 
is also pretty useful because a lot of the works can sometimes happen at night or sometimes you have a solar flare or bad. I personally like that, but I don't consider that a must have. The low sleep thing is amazing. And if you can get it somehow together, never sleep is even better for a crafty for a crafter because crafters basically the longer they work the better therefore this is in my opinion one one of the best traits for a craftsman beyond that there aren't too many genes that are really that amazing for a crafter in per se you can use this uh draft the, the this build here for crafters and artists i don't think it's going to be that well for anything else though it might be also applicable for a intellectual character or a miner but beyond that i don't think that this build sees too much application to balance it out well we already went over a couple of things there's nothing really part particularly special that I could say this goes really really well for a craftsperson. You can also you can pick up the usual suspects like psychically diff or immunity weaknesses if you have great doctors. And what always works if you don't know what to pick up is picking up hemogenic and death rest for example. This gives a, a this gives an amazing amount of uh, metabolic efficiency back to not too much of a drawback. Alternatively, you can also pick it up Hemogenic, Hemogen Drain, and Blood Feeder. This turns your character into a very basic vampire. Needs a bit of blood every uh, few days, but gives you the ability to drain that from other colonists, and it ain't that terrible at all. As you see there, this build is quite demanding in terms of uh, metabolic efficiency. This comes from the Wake Up Addict immunity that I uh, drafted into, which is entirely optional. I just figured that crafters can really, really use up this, uh, can really, really use these uh, immunities. And I just drafted that in as an example of what you can go for. Go choose immunity would be really cool. Wake up immunity would be really cool. Under no circumstances, smoke leave immunity because, you know, smoke leave makes you work slower. I think there are a couple of psychic um, drugs that you could use as well. The drug immunity for a crafter was just something that I felt like one of the best uses for the, uh, one of those genes. Okay, let's head on over to the next topic, the Beastmaster. So as a Beastmaster, I went for a mixture like this. The animal work hole went in, first off, it fits pretty well into the topic, but also it's a really, really good get out the jail free card if you get a tame fail on your taming attempts or you get ambushed while trying to tame something at the edge of the map because the rage just spawns in your face. It is technically not really important but can be pretty pretty useful nevertheless. The very fast runner trait is amazing and can be of course replaced with the smaller cousin, the fast runner, but uh, here's the same reason if you ever get into a animal revenge event, this is always a good thing to have but also rather optional because it's very very costly robust goes into the same venue as the other three traits it protects you from negative uh, events but what here is very very important a beast master is only useful as long as he is on his feet and not downed. The moment a Beastmaster gets downed, his battle animals won't work anymore. Therefore, this build focuses a lot on keeping the Beastmaster on his feet. That's why I also went for reduced pain. Just like with a melee fighter, this build focuses on keeping your Beastmaster functional at all times. Elongated fingers and smooth tail are pretty useful to get those animal resources faster from your bodies and great animals. Well, what can I say? You already know why that's a great thing. So with the downsides, there is nothing particularly um, special for animal, for beast masters. I would only say try to avoid mood debuff things. Depressive would be especially bad because being on a mental breakdown is just as bad as being downed. It, w it might be even a great character to pick up the sanguine trade on. For the downsides, well, just uh, 
I have I had no notes whatsoever when it came down to good things that are pickable for a Beastmaster drawback wise. So go for whatever fits your colony or your play style well. So next one on the list was the plants character. So for a plants character, the traits are very similar to all the other crafts people that we got. The fast runner I picked up because you know you will be running around a lot because of the forge and the like. Of course the uh, bigger cousin there, the very fast runner, fits in very well too. I picked up foam spray for this one as well because foam spray is pretty cool if you ever stood in front of your fields that got struck by lightning and are about to burn down you know what desperation can look like the foam spray trait does a great trick in <laughs> preventing that but it's quite fluffy and i mostly put that in to have something really unique for the plants character as you see here the xenotype for the plants character is very similar to the crafts character i haven't found anything beyond that but the foam spray was really worth mentioning because i found that the uh, plants people are the only that have a innate connection to the skill. All right, so let's go for the last job for your colony, and that's the doctor. The doctor build is the craziest in this list, and here we're going to showcase what you can do. So doctors are extremely powerful, and this build is was my attempt to build an optimal doctor. So super immunity to make sure that your doctor will never succumb to any diseases. Psychically deaf, well, that's mostly to to balance things out, but psychically deaf also means that your character is not going to be influenced by psychic low drones. That is pretty amazing because it lowers the chance of mental breakdowns for your doctor fast runner or a very fast runner well we don't need to talk about the fact that doctors need to be fast sanguine we don't want our doctor to break down mentally cold weakness and heat weakness i picked up because they are cheap and they are easily easy to mitigate tinder skin i picked that really up because i needed metabolic efficiency points <laughs> and uh you know flame damage quadrupled is quite nasty but it is quite avoidable at the same time but this is really because of the because of reasons dead calm i went that i went for that because uh, i wanted to have no chance of social fights whatsoever um, wait a sec, that, no, that was a remnant that didn't belong here. Violence disabled, mostly because of the points, and the doctor can, can afford to do this. If you can work without this gene, do it, because it's really not necessary. I just picked that up because it was a cheap source of three points. Never sleep, that's what you can't do for your doctor. Your people will stay alive a lot more if your doctor is not requiring any sleep. Reduced pain, same thing as with all the characters that uh, we don't want to have downed. Staggeringly ugly is also pretty fun because uh, it's it's okay. It doesn't provide a nece necessarily a big drawback. Strong stomach, immune to food poisoning. You don't want a food poisoned doctor. Dark vision, you don't want a slow working doctor in the darkness and often you are working in the middle of the fields. Elongated fingers and smooth tail combo for faster doctoring. Awful shooting and awful melee. That's something that I don't think should be working. Because if you have violence disabled, these aptitude decreasers are... I feel it's quite scummy, but I wanted to introduce it to you so you know that it works. This is a damn cheap way of getting four extra points if you already disable violence on a character. Just saying. And great medical, well, what do we need to say about that? So there's a couple of things that you could go for. So you could now go for a for a vampire doctor to even things out. It's up to you. There's a couple of points left, but I feel like this is a great example of what you can do to optimize the, um, the genes for a task. And the last thing that I want to feature in this video is a genome for the mechanators. Because mechanators have a very have a very specific kind of need in terms of their genes because they produce pollution. And there are genes that 
are pretty cool in that regard. So for a Mechanitor, I chose for to go for Sanguine, Robust, and Reduced Pain. These are the three, three genes that we already knew from the other builds that are providing a ability to stay on your feet and be less prone to mental breakdowns because Mechanitors, they are minion masters, so therefore they need to be on their feet as long as possible. Tox immunity makes you immune against toxic fallout, toxic everything. You can't just stand on polluted ground and you don't have any problems with that anymore. If you can pick up tox immunity, if you can, total anti-toxic lungs are the next best thing. This one is just a little bit worse than the Tox Immunity. Tox Immunity makes you also entirely immune against um, toxic attacks and uh, the other thing is just about en environmental effects. Beyond that, I also went for Pollution Stimulus because stat bonuses when you're exposed to pollution, that basically makes it really an open invitation to, uh, to pollute your area like crazy. And um, beyond that, Mechanitors don't have too many other traits that you could boost directly. Everything providing survivability is great for your Mechanitor, and pick up whatever you can, whatever you can. Be it super immunity, be it wound healing, be it super clotting. These things aren't too specific to the Mechanitor, though. That's why I didn't pick them up. Or drawback wise, there's nothing that I would say, that, oh yeah, that's brilliant for a Mechanitor. There aren't too many drawbacks that are specifically good for that class. Just fit in what uh, you can afford for your current playstyle. And that's been that. I hope this build, uh, this video helped you out in giving you an idea what you can do with these builds. Keep in mind that all these setups are optimal setups. And uh, Acquiring a certain part of the combo can already make you pretty powerful. Don't try to uh, go for the in, for the big picture. So you see here, the doctor is a great example. If you can't take, if you can't pick up a couple of these already, it'll make your character a lot more effective. And don't shy away from experimenting more. Feel free to share more of your builds or your ideas in this regard, because I'm pretty sure that there are way more um, things that you can do that I haven't found in my couple of hours that I spent here tinkering, I'd be really happy to hear you guys approach to these things. Feel free to leave me a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed, and of course consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Do the bell thing to stay informed about new videos. I'm doing new videos and streams every day, and I'd be really appreciating to have you as well. Another quick pointer towards the support links, you know, Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me A Coffee. I'd be really happy if you check them out. And uh, a last pointer towards the playlist link in the description box. There's a lot of other biotech video tutorials for you to browse. All right, have a good one. Thanks for watching a lot and see you next time.